Hello, welcome to Hot Issues. The fight against uh, illegal mining, popularly called Galamse, has seen several uh, dimensions, allegations of corruption, and now police investigations of uh, missing excavators has dominated the airwaves. Uh, but does this define the approach for the fight against Galamse? Has it been very bad? And considering the president has said that he could put his presidency on the line, has it yielded any Outcomes uh, today. I have Yumano Lynch, director of operations uh, for the Ghana National Association of Small Miners. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks very much for coming to Hot Issues. I am concerned about the news surrounding missing excavators. Are you able to tell me exactly how many, in terms of numbers, excavators your members have lost? Good afternoon, my friend. I'm very um, happy to join you. Uh, yes, at the moment I'm not able to tell you the exact number mm -hmm. because we are still compiling um, the number of excavators that were seized from our members. Mm -hmm. And when I say our members, I mean the legitimate small scale miners, those who had licenses. Um, so once that figure is ready, we'll share with TV3. So you can't give a rough estimate based on your, num your members? Let let's say, can you say 300? Can you say 200? Can you say 400 rough estimates? As we speak, I can't You do cannot. That. But yes. have you been following the discussions of uh, the missing excavators? Yes, I have. You have? Yes. And how does that sound to you, considering that the mandate of the Operation, uh, Operation uh, Vanguard team uh, was executed squarely, and uh, the, uh, by, by applications of the law, the excavators were seized, and now some of them are alleged to be missing. How does that sound to you? Yeah, I mean, so to me and then to the association, we we're very shocked when we heard the news. Um, because my knew that Ghana is a country of laws. Mm -hmm. And we were expecting that once excavators um, were seized from the various um, sites, Moscow sites, being it legal or illegal sites, what we were expecting that the next stage would have been to um, a, a law court mm -hmm. where perhaps the courts will either confiscate to the state or maybe members who may um, have had the excavators come, um, taken wrongly, returned back to them. And that was what we were waiting for. And then we had this news that some excavators um, were missing. So um, when you say members who had excavators taken wrongly, your view or your association's view is that there were some excavators which were not supposed to be seized because the operators had license to operate them? Is that, that what you're saying? That is correct. Um, if you remember, um, during the process of... Um, the ban. Mm. Let me start from when um, Ken and Co started the the fight against illegal mining, mm. and they were calling on the government to ban all forms of small scale mm. mining. Mm. If you remember, uh, right at this particular um, studio, uh, we we said as an association that there was no need for the government to ban licensed small scale miners as part of the fight against illegal mining. I want to put it on record that Association of Small Scale Miners we support every effort to get rid of illegal mining in our society. Because your view is that uh, your operations are not illegal. Exactly. But your operations were part of the many activities of uh, small-scale miners which were having a negative impact on the environment. Uh, well, um, Your operations, you were not reclaiming lands which you mined. There's, there's one thing that I want every viewer to understand, that mining impacts and impacts the environment, mm. basically. Before you can mine, you need to open the belly of the earth and then take the gold out of the place. And then after... So no is, matter what, what you do, what, whether small scale, whether unregulated, whether regulated large scale, the environment will suffer. It will be impacted. The environment will be impacted no matter what. Whether large scale, whether small scale or illegal mining, you are definitely going to open the belly of the earth. Mm. Basically, these are the basic things of mining. Mm. The most important thing is the mitigation effort that you put in place after such activity. And for us, as small-scale miners, what we thought was that for somebody to have gone through the process to obtain a mining license, it is a first step for the person to say that, look, Minerals Commission mine inspectors, anytime you are looking for me, anytime you want to know a site that is doing mining, I am here. This is my map. You can come over and check what I'm doing. EPA, come around and check what I'm doing. If I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do, per the license agreement, 
revoke the, 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 the license. And mm. basically, that's what it is. What am I trying to say? All that I'm trying to say is that the fight against illegal mining, per the fact that a wholesale ban was placed on started all activities. On, started on the wrong foot. That's started what I understand. Basically, it started mm. on, so on the wrong So you think that government foot. shouldn't have come up with that blanket ban which affected the operations of legitimate small-scale miners like yourselves? Basically, that's what I'm And I'm you think about. as a result of that, government failed in the fight against uh, illegal mining? You know, when because you are, it targeted when, the wrong people? When you are building and you start on the wrong foot and you don't build strong foundations, what happens? The burden crumples, and mm. basically that's what we are we are seeing today. Um, because one, the Association of Small Scale Miners and its members, in 2013, we inaugurated our very first tax force. What was their mandate? They mm. were supposed to chase out illegal miners, mm. especially those on our river bodies. Two, we signed an agreement with the University of Mines and Technology. What was the reason? The reason was that they were supposed to train prospective small-scale miners and some of licensed small-scale miners to do regulated and responsible mining, mm. basically. And this was what we, we were doing. Could you believe that before the ban, 20 of our members, was already, they were already going through fair mine certification process. Mm. This is a process that makes sure that um, you observe all needed environmental um, issues and then also occupational safety issues mm. in your business. And then again, you are able to come out with a third party auditor coming in to see that, yes, indeed, you have observed everything and that the gold that is coming out is a clean gold, basically. And then it is sent out there, then you can also achieve a certain premium on your gold. And 20 of our members had started this program. Mm -hmm. In fact, they had gone through three years and they were, with the, they were left you with the last lap. So your view is that your members were targeted unfairly. That's what we have been saying throughout the ban. That's all that we have been saying. But let's move forward. Um, because of the love for this country, because of how we saw the need for us to even promote responsible mm. mining, somehow our members were quite um, cooperative with so government. So cooperated. We cooperated. Mm. And what we wanted was... And you volunteered your task force exactly. to work with and Operation Vanguard They are, they are still on the ground mm. working as we speak. And that should show our commitment to fight against illegal mining. But the point I'm trying to make is that when you are fighting against illegal mining, promoting legitimate licensing small-scale mining is also part of the fight. Because once we chase the guy out of what the guy is doing, which is not good, the guy must have a certain... Um, livelihood. A certain livelihood, one. And then also the guy should be able to identify and, and say that, look, if I live here, there's hope here. I can go through this process and get perhaps so, so uh, let, me, let, me, let me let me understand the strategy that you have been proposing and which you think government didn't follow that there was no need for a blanket ban and that if there was a ban at all on the illegal small scale mining you who had licenses to operate should have been encouraged to continue operating as an avenue for alternative uh, revenue for those who were conducting the business illegally and were kicked out Exactly. I mean, so that they will know that if you are chased out of illegal sites or you are asked to leave, there's a process that you can go through to obtain a license. So, and some people mm, are already doing that. Mm. And then again, um, we were also advocating for the fact that people should be dealt on merit basis. So, for instance, if you meet, um, say, ABCD company, Mining Company Limited, mm. and they are doing the wrong thing, per the agreement of their license, revoke their license, mm. and that's what the law says. And basically, this was what we were also promoting. So, it's not as if that we're saying that everybody that has the license was doing the right thing. So, just, you know, no. All that we we're trying to say is that. Putting everybody together was a wrong move. So let me ask you whether your your members, your association, was supposed to be the legit group, the group which are supposed to operate uh, illegally, following the uh, work of the task force and the interministerial committee that was set up and the roadmap that was followed. Are your people working? Are they conducting mining? Yes. So so far, um, the number that you has come out. can't say yes or no. Look, about 15% are working now. Mm -hmm. Others are not able to work because they've lost their investment. Mm -hmm. They need capital to restart again. And mind you, the way the whole process was managed, right from um, the, the, the time that um, Honorable Amel said that we should stop working for the next 21 days, mm -hmm. and then again, there was an instruction that move your excavators to a certain point within a certain month, and then the six-month ban came. Then after... We waited to about 18 months before the ban was lifted. 
throughout the process. The process was managed poorly, mm -hmm. and so people could not plan well. And you know, mining it, it involves a lot of capital and a lot of planning. Mm -hmm. And so as a result of that, members lost their investment, some lost their capital. Some banks went after our members and took over their properties as well. Some even lost their lives mm -hmm. as we speak. And so the whole process was managed badly, and that has affected us so much that after members have gone through the vetting process and have been declared that they can go back to work, we have less than 15% of our members who are actively doing their mining as we speak as a result of loss of capital and investment. So if you are to rate the government on its effort at clamping down on illegal mining, how would you rate the government between 0 and 10? So, I mean, it's very simplistic, uh, and I, I, don't, I don't want to you go... You don't like I, simplistic I, I, arguments. No, I don't want to You don't go want there. to say one out of ten, two no, out of ten. I don't ten. want to, because, you see, the, fi the fight against illegal mining is quite sophisticated. It, it's a bit complex. It's not as we see it, because, look, you will have ten small-scale miners, mm. or let's say ten illegal miners, mm. moving into or going into a certain hole, and then, and then the hole collapses on five. The next day... The, ten, the, the remaining five goes back in there, in the same hole, going to take the thing again. What does that tell you? There's a certain force that is driving them. And that force is what? Economic force. Look, there's no force that is powerful than economic force. Not to mean the military for the might of the but military. But economic force doesn't have to defy logic and reason and common sense. No, if, if five people died with you in mm -hmm. a pit and you survived uh, out of ten and you go back there, you're stupid. Well, naturally, that is how it's supposed to be. Logically, that's how it's supposed to be. But the guy is saying that, look, um, if I go and I'm lucky, I'll get the gold. Mm. If I am not lucky, I may die. But the same way, if I come out and I don't get anything to do, I may die of hunger as well. Mm. Every die be die. You understand? So basically, this has... Some of the, the, the psyche and the philosophy. So the, so the fight against them, they push them against the, the, the wall, right? Yes, I'm not in any and way didn't trying give to. give them any options. Yes, I'm not in any way trying to promote um, illegal mining. Mm. No, not at all. But I'm, I'm trying to say that the fight against illegal mining is quite a bit complex. Mm. That government should have approached it from several angles. In a sense that. You didn't think that was done? that several approaches were not followed from the beginning of the setting up of the, uh, the tax force to the interministerial committee the and moment, all the roadmaps. Those the, were options. The moment Operation Vanguard was launched and other tax forces were launched, that was the very time that we said that governors missed it. They lost the fight. They just lost the fight. Why? Because right from Jerry John Ronnie's time, at that time, small scale mining was not even legal. Jerry used a lot of military might against Force. them, mm. but they could not succeed until the small scale law was promulgated in 1989. Mm. After that, Kufu also took up the challenge with the army. He didn't succeed. Um, Atamils of blessed memory did the same thing. John Mahama did the same thing with the military. Mm. He didn't so succeed. So there were enough lessons there were for enough this lessons not to resort and to history, that we had brute a lot of force history, using yes, the military That using force. brute force wasn't the right, the appropriate way to mm. go. And the, the, one of the things that this government even added to it is to place a ban on legitimate small-scale miners. That was wrong. That was so wrong. That's akin to saying that there are a lot of um, carnage on our roads mm. and so every driver should stop driving, no car should move for a certain time because there's a ban on driving, nobody should move until we sanitize. So that um, was wrong. That, totally wrong. But, Government missed but, but, but this now gives evidence for you to be able to uh, assess the government's effort at clamping down on illegal mining. I asked that question again. How would you rate the government on a scale of 1 to 10? on the fight against Galamsey. I will tell you that it is not that simplistic. Look, this is an area, if we want to deal with, we need facts and data. We need to do a lot of baseline and determine how we should move. Mm. We need to, first, the first and foremost is to find out why did we fail? Because look, apart from the mining sector, there's no other industry that is well regulated in this country. So we had the regulation. We had the Minerals Commission as regulators as well. So why was the, uh, the, the, the increase in illegal mining? What happened? You go around and then you realize that 
one minerals commission officer perhaps will be put in a place like, let's say, a whole of Eastern region mm. with only one vehicle and a driver, and that's it. This guy is supposed to oversee over 200 licensed small scale mine sites plus the numerous illegal mining sites. Mm. One person with one pickup, how can that person work effectively and efficiently? Resources, issue of resource, issue of personal, um, human resource, mm. and then um, logistical resources. The right, issue of resources. Yumano Lentri is the Director of Operations for the Ghana National Association of Small Scales uh, Miners. I am Stephen Ente. This is Hot Issues, and we are discussing illegal mining, Galamse, which is quite a hot matter. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back and we'll continue with our discussions. Please stay. Welcome to Hot Issues, uh, still discussing illegal mining, Galam. So you were talking about resources. Your thought is that if the existing systems that were in place, uh, the elements of resource were taken seriously, we wouldn't be here seeking to use brute force to resolve a problem which didn't need one. Exactly. And so basically, um, enforcement was an issue. And the first baseline that perhaps the government should have taken was to check the already existing enforcement and regulation, mm -hmm. the, the regulators who are supposed to do, um, enforce regulation. And then we will know where we are as a nation and what needs to be done. That would have been the first thing to, to be done. And then two, for the government to find out which people have changed the aesthetic view of our river bodies. Obviously, the dredges, and according to our minerals law, minerals and mining law at 703, minerals commission do, does not grant any mineral, any license to anybody to mine in any river body. So for starters, nobody can even work within the river bodies. So that would have been a second baseline for the government to check. Then perhaps the government comes into the hinterlands and check about those who work in the forest and those who work without license. Mm. So then, after categorizing the problems, then government will target the various sectors where we need to deal with. Again, between 2013 and 2015, there was a broad stakeholder consultation and we developed a document called um, ASM Framework. Mm. In that document, it was identified that there's a need for a certain strategic body that will make sure that we have intersectorial arrangement so that from day in and day out, they will discuss issues of um, small scale uh, mining and other ASM issues, related issues as well. So there was a need for a certain um, upper body. The, the document identified that particular gap. And I believe that the MMIP also identified that particular gap. And so with a certain of the um, interministerial committee on illegal mining, the fact that it was interministerial around um, ASM was somewhat a welcoming news because it came in to fill that particular gap mm. that um, we were all right. looking for. And so um, that was also another part of it. So that I've mentioned the effectiveness of law enforcement and other regulations as a result of lack of resources, both human and logistical resources. I've mentioned the fact that we needed, the government has segregated the various ASM activities that was going on in the country and then targeted the people that needed to be targeted to remove them off the field mm. as a result of the fight against illegal mining. I've also mentioned the gap um, that we felt needed to be filled as a result of um, there was a need for an interministerial body mm. that, that is supposed to oversee that. And that came about as a result of the work that the wide cons wider consultation that we did across the ASM um, 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 plane. And then the document that we produced was the ASM framework. The MMIP also, also actually indicated this particular um, um, need. Mm. And so it was a welcoming news that the uh, IMCIM was formed by government. And then again, I want to place it on record that in doing all this, there was no need to ban licensed small scale miners because that was not part of the problem. In fact, there was a need to promote 
some small scale mining activities. When you say that was not part of the problem, it's to suggest that there were some assessments made about the impact the activities of licensed uh, miners had on the environment in general. Was there anything like that? Well, I mean, the reason why I'm saying that there was no need for that is this. You are looking to stop exerting behavior, behavioral attitude, exerting attitude mm. that is being driven by economic force. Mm. And some people have taken the initiative to go through the process as per the law mm. to regularize their activities and by so doing offering themselves up for minerals commission mines inspectors and any other um, agent that is responsible for ensuring that responsible mining is done. And so if there has been an increase in illegal activity of such project mm -hmm. and it's happening in an area that the law does not even capture, that's the river bodies. So the first point of attack or call was supposed to have been in the river bodies, first and foremost. Then you come back and identify those in our forest reserves as well, because those are also uh, an, uh, an, uh, a no-go area. Then from there, perhaps you come into the hinterlands, where then you can find a mix of the licensed miners and then those who don't have license. And in all this, you involve the players. Because as our uh, parlance says, um, you're the, you're the nam nechinam, nam, mm. or um, it takes a thief to catch a thief. Yeah. And so the people who are on the ground and knows what they are doing, and they have, they've taken the initiative to license their operations, perhaps want to do something good. Perhaps. And so those people needed to have been engaged. And thankfully, we had an association. Yes, the government engaged us. That I must be clear about that. Mm. He engaged us on um, how he wanted fruitful to Fruitful engagement, way forward. You wouldn't say fruitful, right? Uh, well, there was an engagement, mm. basically. There was an engagement, um, uh, several engagements, but all towards what government wanted to do. Mm. Towards what government wanted so to let's do. look at uh, the things government uh, wanted to do. So we'll change focus a little bit. Uh, as part of the activities to clamp down on operations uh, of illegal miners, the uh, government introduced a gallum stop uh, where we're told that there were going to be drones uh, to monitor activities of illegal miners. Uh, did you spot drones at all, your members? Well, uh, personally, I, I've seen some drones. Um, I saw them when... You know, remember when we were asked to come and do vetting, mm. licenses were collected and then they were remapped. Or perhaps they went to um, mm. verify the boundaries of those so licenses. So your thinking is that the drones and were used for the that? The drones were used for that, yes. Um, because they did um, to my, my personal mm. minds as well. Mm. The drones were used to go on the various boundaries of our concessions. Mm. So I saw some of the drones being used in those areas. And other miners can also testify. Mm, but you can't uh, say that the that. drones were used to, for example, check illegal activities as we were told? Uh, well, um, for illegal activities, I cannot speak to that. I cannot speak to the fact that the drones were used for the mining and making, uh, for the mapping and making sure that uh, we were mining within our boundaries. Obviously, uh, you won't be in a position to tell us how many drones, etc., etc. Not at all. No. So, so let's look at the uh, activities of the Operation Vanguard again, in contrast with the fact that the minister himself had uh, another militarized or force in, in operation separately. Did you find these two uh, working against each other or working to fulfill nothing because they possibly were working under two different instructions? You mean um, Operation Vanguard and Galam Stop? No, Operation Vanguard and where, where, and, and, and a team which was set up uh, by the ministry to do similar thing Operation Vanga was doing, Gallup stuff, yeah. Uh, well, I, 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 I'm not familiar with the chain of command mm. for the two groups. Yeah. And so I but cannot you wouldn't say that. that the, but what I wanted to establish was whether you get the sense that with two groups all in operation, uh, achieving the same thing was effective at all. What I know is that the, the, field, the playing field was too big, mm. even for 400 um, personnel. Mm. So if government wanted to use military, of which we are against as an association, mm. I've, I've made that point clearly. But then should, if government wanted to use it, would have perhaps need more mm. to even have anything effective. And you know, that could have worked for a short time. 
Medium to long term, there was no way that would have been effective. You know why? Because you see, the, the same economic force will come to play here. In the mining fields, this economic force is quite important to be considered. It's a factor that needs to be considered in any solution you want to provide. And we've had um, a, a very um, top, one of the top MPs coming out to say that some of the officers and personnel were lining their pocket. Were compromised. Were compromised. And they were taking bribes. Exactly. Did anyone attempt to give you bribes, any of your members? Myself? Mm. Or take bribe from you? My members? Yes. Not at all. Not at all? No. You never had a situation where somebody reported to you that a team ex uh, attempted to extract bribes from them uh, to allow them continue No, for that one, yes. I, I told that we are compiling some of the mm. stuff that mm. has mm. gone on. And this time we've even succeeded in paying some money and mm. all that. So we are, we are actually compiling so indeed, bribery took of, place. Of, of that. Yes. Bribery took Some place. of the things happened. Mm. Yes. Some of the things happening in this. And are you able to tell us, give us a fair idea of how much at each time Quantum, some of your members paid? I can't say that for a fact now. Can you guess? No, I can't guess. I can't guess. You wait until we, we gather in But the reports were made to you, so you should be able to tell how many. You said payments were made. Are you shielding your members or shielding the officers who demanded the bribe? That is one thing I will not do. But you see, in issues like this, emotions comes to bear and emotions are at play. And so if you don't verify information well, mm. you may end up saying something that is not so. So you want to play the neutral arbiter, despite the fact that your members have suffered extensively in the hands of uh, activities aimed at streamlining Galamsey operations. Licenses have been redrawn. People, people have died. People have lost their capital. Banks have come after some of your members. A bribe? You can't tell me about bribe? Despite I will only speak to things that I'm very much aware of. Mm. Seriously. So that if I come out and say that Mr. A paid bribe to Mr. B and it's three or four CDs, then I am sure and setting. You must have evidence exactly. to back it. Exactly. That's the only so thing. What's, what, let's look at the, 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 the upsurge of Galamsey operation following uh, you, you didn't want to rate the, the, the government's achievements, whether one, one to ten, whether they did well or did bad. But we have Galamsey coming back in a bang on our hand. In the Western region, we're told that water rationing might take place because at Dompoisi, for example, there's not enough water for treatment because there's a lot of pollution, a lot of silting. Galamse is back with a bang. Would you say that? Uh, well, I would say that we, we should not also um, condemn the government's efforts. I would say that. You know why? When before the, the ban and the issues, when you traveled between Kumase and then Takwa using the Obwasi Road, you realize that there were a lot of Galamse activities by the roadside. They were ongoing. They were the, not secret. Yes, they were going there. But now if you go there, it's not like that again. They are no longer there. Mm. So perhaps that can be a success. Mm. And like I said, the association supports any move to stop illegal mining. But you won't say Galamse is mining. back more aggressively than before. That's the point I want to establish. I am not able to say that now. Mm. Until perhaps the study that we are doing completes. Mm. Because, like I said, one of the things that um, we were not able to do before the ban was to perhaps have a baseline study mm. of the issues and know that, okay, perhaps we had, um, let's say, 30,000 incidents of galaxy you operations. You, you expect a government to do that. Exactly. So that after we can come back and say that, as a result of perhaps A, B, C, D actions taking, we have reduced that by 30%, 50%, 100%. Then we can go back and verify. But since we did not do this, it will be very difficult to do an evaluation. But the only thing I can say is that for what I saw between Ashanti region, Kumasi, and Takwa, when you are using the Obwasi Road, the incidence of Galamse activities that were going on is no longer there. You can't see it. And again, if somebody wants to even do Galamse now, it will be difficult for the person to do it by the roadside. Mm. Perhaps that's also an, an attitudinal change yeah. that has happened. For instance, the association, we have a template that we work with, four E's and A. One is education. By education, we mean that people need, ought to be trained. You go to the classroom, they train you, or they come to the field, they train you on how to do things and do it properly and all that. 
again, sensitization is part of that education I'm talking about. Awareness creation is part of that. Awareness creation on occupational health and safety issues. Awareness creation on how to mine responsibly and all that. Awareness creation on how to source gold and traceability in our gold and all those kind of stuff in there as part of education, which is one E. And then we, we have what we call empowerment. Basically, what we believe in that the government and other aligned agencies should be able to empower the association mm. to be able to also do some kind of audit on its members. And that audit, when we bring it up, they should support it so that at least we can also check ourselves, do peer-to-peer -peer reviews and all that. Mm. And then, again, another one is engineering. Mining is, is a science and it involves a lot of engineering even from the way you design your pit all the way to how you do your constructions and all that, it's engineering. And so one ought to employ people, mm. professionals, who right. knows how to do these things and put them in. And then um, um, the, the fourth E, it's also about, um, I've mentioned empowerment, yeah. um, engineering, education, and then um, the, there's an A. The A is attitudinal change. We believe that when all these things happen, then attitude will change. Must change. Uh, Ms. Entry, time has run out on us. But I want to ask you my final question, yes or no. Are you going to continue cooperating with government uh, in its fight against Galamsey operations? Yes, we are going to continue to do that because the association believes in making sure that there is no illegal mining happening and in Ghana. And you think that the fight against Galamsey is a better option? The fight against Galamsey is an important call for every Ghanaian. It is not only government, every Ghanaian must get involved. But promoting small scale mining is also a supreme call for every Ghanaian to make sure that we promote responsible small scale mining in this country. And that's it for Hot Issues. Thanks very much uh, for being with us. I've been speaking with Yamano Aintree, the Director of Operations for the Ghana National Association of Small Scale Miners. Thanks for your time. Thanks for coming. Thank you.